friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 30th. My goodness, we're through June and I barely got used to uh, it being spring. It's a somewhat rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but we really needed the rain. And I just completely failed to say the word southeastern, but the phrase up. Hi. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great Sunday. I am enjoying some more horse bar once again. Uh, and I do enjoy this stuff. And that is in a 7LE 315. This is a print shape. Uh, it's a KS size. And it is a twin bore. You're probably not going to be able to see that. But uh, maybe you can see it there. It's a twin bore. Uh, and the stem is badly oxidized. I, I've been meaning to clean that up again. But honestly, I'm torn between whether I want to make a new stem for this or if I want to. I don't like the twin bore. It's just a pain to clean. And it doesn't really make a difference in smoking. I don't know if I want to file it out or preserve the stem and make a new one. It's a shame because it's a handsome pipe and I, I do enjoy smoking it. I just hate cleaning it. So you'll very rarely see me with the, uh, the 315Ks. It's hard to get a pipe cleaner down that little bore. And I know I can get church warden pipe cleaners and dill pipe cleaners and everything else and they make a special falcon pipe cleaner or at least they used to which works really well in this but it's just annoying that i can't just go through my normal routine anyway so yeah i i want to talk a bit today about um about this concept of trusting people try looking for a source of information And this, this came about in a, in a sort of weird way. And uh, I promise you this isn't going to be anything about political or anything about current events in the YouTube pipe community, which I know there are. But there's always current events. Because uh, with those things, I, I take my, my, uh, my advice from matches who told me once that this kind of stuff comes and goes in the YouTube community, and what you do is you just ride the wave. Those were his words, ride the wave. Don't wade into it. Don't try to stop it. Don't try to just go up, then it'll come back down. And I, I, that was the best advice I've gotten about YouTube. Uh, that and a piece of advice from Danny Shore, and sadly they're both gone. But anyway. I don't want to get into any of that. I don't want to talk about any of that kind of stuff. Um, so don't worry. This is about how we figure out what's real and how we figure out what's what's true. And it's different than how we used to. And oddly enough, I had this realization this morning reflecting on a movie that I watched last night. And some of you guys are going to find this to be really strange. By the way, I left my Zippo upstairs, so I got the hippie lighter. I watched um, a movie called The Reincarnation of Peter Proud. This is a 1975, 76 film. Um, and I watched it... So I was... I, I usually watch Creature Features and then Spengoolie on on, Saturday, on Saturday nights. And I started off looking for... I, the, the Creature Features movie, this is the latest one that I could watch last night, was um, The Stepford Wives. And I've just seen The Stepford Wives like within the past two months, so I didn't want to watch it again. So I went back to their older things, and I'm just scanning through them, looking for... Some, and the reincarnation of Peter Proud pops up, and I went, oh... That's a movie I remember the commercials for when I was a kid. You know, I was in grade school, and I remember these commercials. And they're very, I can't, I can't tell you anything about them. But the sound of the, the announcer saying the reincarnation of Peter Proud is very strong. I have this strong audible memory, not audible, oral, aural memory of, of that voice. I've never seen the movie. And I thought, well, you know, after all this time, I'm going to watch that movie. And I watched it, and it was it was a finely crafted film. It's not something I'm going to recommend you all go out and watch. Um, 
But yeah, so I watched it. And I got to thinking about those commercials this morning. And again, I cannot remember anything. I didn't even know what the movie was about, you know, so I don't even remember even minor details about the commercial, just the sound of it. And we don't have a lot of movie commercials anymore. When we do, they're just action, 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 action. You know, there's no, there's no real voiceover. Um, trailers have voiceovers, but it's always that inner world guy. That you know, it's it's drama, drama building, and back in the in the, in the late '60s and early '70s, it was very much a newscaster style, for for lack of a better term. It was just factual. It was the guy. There was probably a couple people that did it, but it's, in my memory, it was just one voice. Uh, it was it was a slightly higher pitch. It was it was more nasal, and it was very. Um, direct and almost documentary in, it, in its approach. So, you know, now you might hear something like, um, if, if you were watching a commercial for a car, you, you know, and they're trying to make the point that the car gets better gas mileage, they might say something like, uh, ribbon to go further or something like that. I'm clearly making this up off the top of my head. But at that time, the narration would have said something like, you'll get better gas mileage in the new Ford, you know, whatever. It just is a very different style. And for better or worse, I mean, I don't, I don't think one, you know, there's the thing you're comfortable with, and I guess that they go with what sells. But that voice was different back then, and it wasn't just the voice of car commercials or movie commercials. It was the voice of the newscasters. You turn on news radio, and that's what you would hear. And uh, you you turn on the evening news, and that's what you would hear. And I've got Walter Cronkite in the in the title card because you know he's probably the most famous uh, voice of that time. Cronkite was a pipe smoker, as you can see in the title card, which uh, you know right away puts him in the club. So we we like him. But he was a trusted fellow. He was at times referred to as the most trusted man in America. And think about what Concrete led us through. And, and for those of you that are too young to remember him, he was the evening news. You know, he, he was what you watched. And uh, sure, there were competitors and all that, but it, Cronkite was the guy. And he led us through Kennedy assassination, Vietnam, uh, the moon landing, the impeachment of Richard Nixon. You know, these were these were major events in, in the history of our country. Um, formative events. Because, you know, we're still still a very young country in a lot of ways. And he was trusted. He was he was considered the final fact check, if, if you will. We didn't have this concept of fact checking because we believed the news. And I think we were right to believe the news then. Because you, you did have investigative reporting and you had things like Watergate where you got the facts, you, know, you knew what was happening. Or did you? And that's the, the other side of the coin. So. You know, I look at today, and we don't have that. Who's our Walter Cronkite today? Who do we look to and say, that's the person I trust? I can't think of one. I really can't. And, you know, if you're of a particular mindset, you might be able to say, well, you know, when it comes to news, I trust this person, or I trust this network, or, you know. But really... Because there's probably 65, you know, junior Cronkites out there and 65 different groups of people who all process, post, profess that their junior Cronkite is the right one who's telling the truth. And they all disagree with one another. They're, that can't be right. We're fractured. We're, we're badly fractured. And... 
we all have access to information now. We don't need it to be funneled through a, an individual, for better or worse. Because it doesn't get funneled through an individual, it never gets synthesized. It never gets balanced and, and, and the truth is not distilled out of that vast array of information. But it's human nature to, as you're distilling that truth, to apply bias to it. So the question is, are we lacking that voice of, of, of trust today? Or were we misled to believing we had that voice of trust back then? And I think it's a little of both. You know, I don't think, I don't think Walter Cronkite himself was, was lying to us. But I think there were times when the message had to be finessed. And maybe you only heard one side of the story. And maybe that was okay. Maybe we do need to be kept in the dark about some things. I don't know. I know when we have all the information thrown at us without any filtering, without any attempt to synthesize or, or fact check or whatever you want to call it, we get chaos. You know, I've seen intelligent people say, and, and this is this is not to get into politics, it's just to use a, an example, which I think is ridiculous. I've heard intelligent people, otherwise intelligent people, say that uh, our president is currently being kept in a hospital bed and being kept alive on life support, and they've replaced him with somebody that looks just like him. And... Anybody that watched the, the debate last week knows that that can't possibly be true unless they did a really bad job picking a body double. Are there, is there any truth in that? Yeah, probably needs medical care that we don't know about and stuff. Uh, he's, he's an older man, you know. And then on the other side, um, just to just to be fair, you know, there's people that really believe that uh, there's all these conspiracies and backroom dealings and you know connections with Russia and corrections connections with North Korea and everything else. And is any of that true? Well, to the extent that it's been investigated, no. Um, does that mean that he's a saint? No, of course not. But there's no there's no person that we can look to to say help us you know get rid of all this nonsense and just give us the core facts that we need to understand this situation we don't get that and we're not going to get it so we have to get it ourselves and maybe if we had the technology to do it back in the 60s and 70s we would have been shocked <laughs> maybe uh, you know, there's some evidence that we would have been. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's some things specifically around Watergate, which I, I know better because I was interested in it. Uh, yeah, we might have been shocked. So the bottom line in all of this is that in all aspects of life, when you need to know something, make sure you really know it. Don't trust anyone. And I mean that with kindness. I don't mean that we should walk around saying, oh, everybody's lying to me. No. I mean, even the best intentioned person will tell you something. But you shouldn't trust it until you confirm it. We live in a world that is real. You know, the existence exists. The basic tenet of objectivism, and I'm not an objectivist. But they're right about that. Existence exists. And this is particularly true in the world of pipe smoking. If I tell you 
This Savinelli 315KS is the best smoking pipe you'll ever have. You don't trust me. Because I don't know what pipes you have. I don't know what your smoking style is. I don't know what your cadence is. I don't know what kind of tobaccos you smoke. You shouldn't trust that. And of course you wouldn't. I hope. If I tell you this is the way to pack a pipe, this is the way to, to, to smoke a pipe, to light a pipe, you got to have this lighter, you got to have this tamper. Don't trust that. I'm going to do a full video on this, and I talked about it on, on Friday night. But in pipe smoking, like many, many parts of our life, we need to discover it for ourselves. We need to find the truth. Because the truth that I have, the truth for me, is not the truth that you will have. Because you're not me. So there you have it. And that's the way it was. Uh, you older guys will know why I said that. I want to give you a quick update on my brother and then thank you for all the prayers and all the kind words that I've gotten. Um, and if you sent me an email recently, I apologize. I have not had time to sit down and think. Uh, so I think a little bit in the mornings, but I don't tend to have a computer in front of me. And then the rest of the day is just craziness. My brother's back in the hospital. He's taking a turn for the worse and we don't understand it. Uh, he was doing well, he was recovering, and they were going to do surgery uh, to remove this mass that they still have not been able to identify as cancer. And he went back in the hospital because he passed out. Uh, and now they've said, well, it's, it's drawn in the small intestine. I don't know what that means. It's not in the small intestine. It has not metastasized. And there's nothing they can do for him. They're going to send him home with palliative care, and he's going to die. Uh, and that may be true, but I have trouble accepting it because I have so little information. We're going to try to get him a second opinion. He's at um, University of Vermont uh, Medical Center in Burlington, which is a fine hospital. We're going to have him go to Dartmouth to get a second opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm praying, and I hope you all join me in praying for Scott. He's a, he's a good guy. And this is really hard because uh, he is autistic. He, I said this on Friday, he, he, he's one of the smartest guys I know in a lot of ways, but when it comes to like emotional level and, and social interaction, he's kind of like eight years old. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna tell him that this is happening to him. You know, I just really don't know. That's gonna be hard. So please pray for him. Pray for my sister who's who's there caring for him. And uh, yeah, just, just and pray for all the doctors and nurses and everyone else. And beyond that, I want you to uh, pray for folks in our community that need prayer. Um, I don't want to give names because I haven't been asked to. I've asked to, been, I've asked to pray, been asked to pray for someone who's uh, going through a very difficult time uh, right now with some personal housing type issues. And I know other people that are having difficulties in that area. Um, yeah, there's a lot of folks that need our prayers right now. So pray for the whole community and pray for this nonsense that's going on. You know, pray that people see that there's no value in fighting and that uh, the wheat will be separated from the chaff. So with that, folks, I'm going to finish up my war horse and uh, get on with my Sunday, which is going to be composed of doing pretty much nothing because I'm exhausted. So hopefully I'll get a good night's sleep tonight and uh, get back to work tomorrow. I hope you all are well. Have a great 4th of July uh, for those of you that celebrate the 4th of July. And uh, for those of you outside of the U.S., you don't have a firework, it's fun. All right, folks.
with that, I will draw this to a close. Thank you for uh, for joining me today. Uh, I don't know, with my brother, I don't know if I'll be back next Sunday. I'm going to try real hard to do that, and I'll try to put posts up if I'm not uh, to let you know what's going on. Same with the live streams on Friday. So take care, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.